Around the turn of the century on the Mackenzie River and all over the Northwest, lumberjacks had to be resourceful when harvesting and transporting heavy trees safely and efficiently from the forest to mills downstream. Trees that later would be used to help build our houses, our businesses, and our community. Tools of the trade for falling trees in the early 1900s were an ax, wedge, and a cross-cut saw. The work was difficult and extremely dangerous. Here we see timber fallers standing on springboards on the upper Mackenzie. First a notch is chopped near the base of the tree, then the springboard is inserted and used as a precarious platform as the men continue their work. A high climber uses iron climbing hooks and rope to ascend a tall tree in the landing area of a logging site. The climber would remove all the limbs as he climbed up before topping the tree. Then the high climber would attach pulleys and rigging to the tree so it could be used as a spar pole or anchor to help move, or as the logger called it, yard logs. Here we see a steam donkey being moved. These heavy machines were used for yarding logs. The donkey has a steam engine connected to a winch all mounted on a sled called a donkey sled. The donkeys were moved by simply dragging themselves with the winch line. Steam donkeys were strategically located along a skid road to drag the logs from point to point towards the river. A logging crew and two women pose on a log flume above stacked logs in 1905. A log flume is specifically constructed to transport logs down mountainous terrain. Horse teams, which hauled logs from the woods into the river, gather on the banks of the upper Mackenzie. Notice the spout of water seen in the background caused by a log dropping from a flume. Here we see the river drivers with their all-purpose tool, the PV. The PV was used to roll logs, break jams, pry rocks, tighten chains, and push over trees. At the beginning of a log drive, here we see river drivers working together to push a log with their PV hooks near Deerhorn. The intrepid men who rode those huge bucking and rolling masses of logs were known as river drivers. Their job was to keep the logs moving and prevent them from jamming. Being a river driver was hard work, an exciting job. Staying alive required strength, agility, and luck. Breaking for lunch on a gravel bar along the upper Mackenzie, notice the river driver's corked boots used for log rolling. Their lives depended on these boots. You never wanted to slip. Before the days of roads, or even railroads, another method of getting timber to market was the use of splash dam log drives. This temporary wooden dam raised the water level in a stream by creating a pond. Here you see logs waiting to be released in Curry Hole, located near what is now Greenwood Drive. Splash dams allowed the logs to be released when the river was high enough to float the logs downstream to the mills. Here a group of women and children stand on a log raft on the Mackenzie River near Coburg. This log diversion boom was located near Coburg. The floating boardwalk with projecting guide boards spanned the river and was designed to divert logs floating downriver to the Coburg Mill Race, where they were processed at local sawmills. The Booth Kelly Lumber Mill is the final destination for these Mackenzie logs floating in the mill pond. These logs soon became lumber for our bridges, houses, and other needed building materials. With the development of railways and roads for trucks, transporting logs on the Mackenzie River ended in 1914. We hope you enjoyed this glimpse of early life along the majestic Mackenzie River in Oregon. Special thanks to the Lane County Historical Museum, Curtis Irish, 
Mark Stafford of Stafford Video, and I'm Bob Warren for the Mackenzie River Trust. The Mackenzie River Trust helps people protect and care for the lands and rivers they cherish in Western Oregon.